Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to this Tuesday. Hopefully, uh, you got through yesterday. You know, uh, quite a little storm, you know, that came through a couple times during the day. Uh, I know we got hit twice, you know, once was in uh, mid late morning and then uh, the other one was in uh, early evening, you know, yesterday. So, you know, quite a bit of stuff going on, you know, which is kind of unusual for us this time of year. But um, uh, hopefully you're going to enjoy the warmth as you have maybe a little cloud, little rain this morning and uh, and have a great day. So we are in um, Isaiah chapter 51. And Isaiah chapter 51, we're just a couple weeks, you know, away from being done with Isaiah. Not going to lie, kind of excited about being done with Isaiah. Very long, you know, book. Uh, there's a lot of things in here, but uh, very challenging, you know, as well. Uh, what's interesting in Isaiah is you're going to notice in chapter 51 is that uh, three times it talks about listen to me. Uh, listen to me. So uh, we're going to kind of see what God is actually trying to say to his people and also say to us. So he says, listen to me, all who hope for deliverance, all who seek the Lord, consider the rock from which you were cut, the quarry from which you were mined. Yes, think about Abraham, your ancestor, and Sarah, who gave birth to your nation. Abraham was only one man when I called him, but when I blessed him, he became a great nation. The Lord will comfort Israel again and have pity on her ruins. Her desert will bloom like Eden, her barren wilderness like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found there. Songs of thanksgiving will fill the air. So the Lord right now is speaking to his people, you know, uh, who are having a hard time, uh, guess what, listening to him. So what's fascinating is how often uh, do we, in, you know, uh, um, have a hard time getting our kids or other people to listen to us? You know, think about how many times that you speak and you say, are you listening? Are you listening? And they say, yes. Now they may hear but they're not listening, you know, to hear like, I hear words that are coming out of your mouth, but to listen is to take to heart, to take to mind, you know, is what that word means. And so are we listening as God's children in the same way that our children may have a challenging time listening to us? Or if it's not children, how about friends? How about spouses? You know, that we have a challenging time to listen to one another. How often, maybe I should say it this way. How often does the Lord speak and we have a hard time listening to him? How often is he trying to speak to us, but we're not listening? And so what he's saying here is the first of the three listens is he's saying, listen, the Lord's past faithfulness is a promise of future blessing. Okay, let's just pause right there. The Lord's past faithfulness is a promise to future blessings. Are you listening? Because sometimes when we go through trials or circumstances or things that are negative, we think this season's going to last forever. And one of the things that we can be reminded of is to listen to the, to the Lord who says, remember my past faithfulness. It's actually a promise of future blessing. You're in this situation or I'm in this situation, but God was here and God's going to be here. And so just remember that, you know, when we're right here. And so I love that he counsels his people, you know, to look at his work and in his people to look pat, back, you know, and as that will give us strength as we look forward. You know, and so they were in discouraging place. And so we can find ourselves in discouraging places as well. And so one of the greatest impacts that we can have when we're going through challenging times in the present is look to the past to know that God was faithful. He's going to be faithful. He will be faithful, you know, in our present circumstances. Verse four, here it comes the next time. Listen to me, my people, listen to me, hear me, O Israel. For my law will be proclaimed and my justice will become a light to the nations. My mercy and justice are coming soon. My salvation is on the way. My strong arm will bring justice to the nations. All distant lands will look to me and wait in hope for my powerful arm. Look up to the skies above and gaze down on the earth below. For the skies will disappear like smoke and the earth will wear out like a piece of clothing. The people of the earth will die like flies, but my salvation lasts forever. My righteous rule will never end. So he's saying again, listen to me. The Lord's salvation and righteousness are forever. So what gives us hope in the future and in the present is righteousness. Remember, we are made right. Sorry about that. We are made right by God you know, uh, because of what Christ has done, not by what we have done, just by receiving him. So we need to listen, you know, listen to him. And also remember that his salvation and righteousness are forever. Then we hit seven and eight. Notice what he says here. Listen to me, 
You who know right from wrong, you who cherish my laws in your heart, do not be afraid of people's scorn, nor fear their insults. For the moth will devour them as it devours clothing. The worm will eat at them as it eats wool. And then it says, but my righteousness will last forever. My salvation will continue from generation to generation. So what he's saying there is listen, listen to me. Fear God, not man. Fear God, not man. So the three listens that he's trying to help us to understand is listen. The Lord's past faithfulness is a promise of future blessing. The second listen, the Lord's salvation and righteousness are forever. The third listen is fear God. Don't worry about fearing man. And then I want to jump down, you know, kind of to verse uh, 17. This is a longer chapter. Uh, chapter, verse 17. Wake up, wake up, you know, O Jerusalem. You have drunk the cup of the Lord's fury. You have drunk the cup of terror, tipping out its last drops. Uh, once again, uh, he's referring to the cup. Remember the cup we talked about the week before Easter, the cup of suffering, you know? And so he said, let me read it again. Wake up, wake up, O Jerusalem. You have drunk the cup of the Lord's fury. So you have experienced the suffering that, that has come upon you. You have drunk the cup of terror, tipping out its last drops. And so here is the full fullness of his wrath that's coming on his judgment, you know, that God, that, that they're experiencing through the Babylonians, specifically to the nation of Israel. And so as we talk through that, once again, this is what Jesus is praying for, that he takes on for us the cup of judgment, the cup of suffering he takes on us, which is why, once again, we, we see and seem to experience a different God of the New Testament versus the God of the Old Testament. And so what a powerful image that Jesus takes on for us as well. So I didn't want you to miss that as we go through this chapter. So as we close, here's my encouragement for you. Listen, may you and I listen to what God has said. May it penetrate our hearts and minds. And because we truly are gonna listen, may we truly obey. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you so much for today. Today is your day. And Father, we just pray that we would be able to listen, take to heart and mind what you are saying, not just to hear, not just to read, not just to agree with, but truly to listen. We love you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, guys, again, you know, oh, Terry, I'm sorry. Yes, it's going to be 110 in Arizona, maybe even up to 115 the rest of the week. You know, uh, just pray that you be with uh, you guys. We're going to be in the 80s. So, you know, uh, pray for kids camp, though. This is day two of four. So today, you know, Wednesday and Thursday, you know, uh, they had to adjust some things because of the weather as well. And so just pray that it's an incredible day. They, I know they're going to have fun. But once again, just pray that God's spirit moves in a powerful way and uses the leaders, you know, and the lessons so that the kids can what? Listen to what God has for them today. You know, so thanks again. I love you guys. And we'll see you guys tomorrow morning. We'll be on Isaiah 52.